Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, it is Thursday night and we are here again for our Holy Communion service. Thank you for allowing me, allowing us into your homes and uh, I would like to welcome you, all our viewers, those who are watching us from the one according television and also those who are also watching us from our social media platforms facebook youtube i would like to welcome you all what a blessing what a blessing the lord is going to minister into us tonight i would like to appreciate my bishop my pastor bishop dr mark Kariuki, for giving me this opportunity to step in on his behalf. Sir, thank you so much. I appreciate. And I would request all of us who are watching from home, please get your elements ready. Get your elements ready. After we have received the word of the Lord, after we have received the word of the Lord, we will partake of the Lord's table. We will partake of the Lord's table. And so I will be glad if you can do this together with me, do this together with me, sit down with your family, sit down with your loved ones, get the elements ready. While I'll be leading, partaking of this one that are on my table here, you too, you'll be doing the same from your home and the Lord shall bless us. And so it's our Holy Communion service. But before we go into the Holy Communion service, we always begin by receiving the word of the Lord. We always begin by receiving the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is our comfort. The word of the Lord is our strength. The word of the Lord gives us energy to move forward in life. So an opportunity to get into the word of the Lord it is precious. We should, we should open our hearts, open our spirits, and just allow this word, and allow this word to get into us, get into us, and bring a difference in our lives and in our situations. At some point, our Lord Jesus Christ said that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Father. What that simply means is the word of the Lord gives us life. The word of the Lord gives us life. Somebody taught us many years ago and said the word of God carries both curative and creative powers. What that means is the word of the Lord can bring healing, can bring healing into our bodies. And also the word of the Lord can bring can create something in our life that was not existing there before. So I urge all of us to just be ready to receive this word. And I am sure that the Lord is going to minister into us. I want to share with us on the subject. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to put our trust in the Lord. In the Lord. We are taking our reading from the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 23. It is so sweet to trust in the Lord. Matthew chapter 8 verse 23. The Bible says, now when he, now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with wave with the waves but he was 
asleep. When his disciples, then, then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? He then arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. I like another version, and, 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 and in, in, in the other book of the Gospels, it introduces this, this story that Jesus told his disciples to, to cross the sea from where they were to the other side. They were to cross the sea from the side where they were to get to the other side. And I want you to know that is what life is all about. Life is so dynamic. Life is no st is, it's not static. Life is not stagnant. Life is dynamic and progressive. It is progressive. Yani, we are moving from here to there. Each one of us, each one of us has here, and each one of us desires to get to there. Like the disciples together with Jesus, the Bible says their movement from here to there, it was necessary that they cross the sea, and that they were to use a boat, a vessel. And the Bible says, when they entered into the vessel and they began the journey, they began the journey, but somewhere in the middle of the journey, there were waves, there were disturbances in the sea. Somehow their journey was being disrupted. Somehow their journey was being disrupted. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I know wherever you are, you are familiar with what I call progress disruptions. Things that occur to disrupt the progress of your life. Things that occur to disrupt the progress of my life. Somehow, somehow, at some point, we are all have experienced disruptions. We have all experienced disturbances that came to disrupt our comfort. We have, at one point or the other, experienced hindrances or blockages. Apparently, in deliverance church, this is our year of threshing mountains. And from one angle, I define a mountain as an obstacle. An obstacle that comes to blockade. An obstacle that comes to make it impossible for you to get from here to there. Like in the case with the disciples, the obstacle was the raging waves in the sea. The raging waves in the sea. And so the question that comes up so easily in our minds is this. What do we do? What do we do? When we experience disruptions, when we experience situations and circumstances that are hostile to our forward progress, when we experience situations that somehow make it impossible for us to progress, for us to move forward, that is what brings in the subject of, my, of this sermon tonight. Trust, it is so sweet to trust in the Lord. It is so sweet to trust in the Lord, my dear viewer. If there is any lesson that I wish somebody taught me early in life would be how to trust in Jesus. If there was any lesson I would encourage every parent to teach their children is how to trust in Jesus. Maybe you'll ask me, Pastor, what does it mean to trust in the Lord? Let me give you a definition that I got from somewhere. To trust simply means to believe in the reliability. To believe in the reliability. Number two, to believe in the truthfulness. Number three, to believe in the ability or strength of something or someone. Let me take that one more time. To trust simply means to believe in the reliability. To believe in the truthfulness, 
to believe in the ability or strength of something or someone. So when it comes to trusting God, that simply means believing in his reliability. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to declare unto you that our God is reliable. Our God is reliable. Our God is dependable. You can rely on him. You can depend on him. He is so faithful. He is so faithful. His word, we can, we can, we can believe and depend on his word. We can believe and depend on his abilities and strength. The Bible says that our God cannot lie. Our God cannot lie. That is our God. That is our God. He cannot lie. He always keeps his promises. He always keeps his promises. And he loves his people. He loves his people. In other words, he is committed to the progress of his people. In other words, he is committed to the well-being of his people. So, when we experience disturbances in our lives, when we experience frustrations in our lives, when we experience obstacles in our lives, when we experience setbacks in our lives, what a moment to trust in our God. What a moment to trust in the faithfulness of our God. What a moment to trust in the abilities of our God. I am here to declare unto you that your God is a faithful God. Your God is a faithful God. The God of the Bible is dependable. You can depend on him, my brother, my sister. You can trust him for your family. You can count on him in any situation of your life. You you can count on him in any situation of your life. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. I have tried it and I know, and I know, and I know. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. He is dependable and reliable. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter, Psalms chapter 20, verse 7, some trust in chariots. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But who are we? Who are we? We will remember the name. Another version says, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Oh, my dear viewer, where you are, I wish you could shout and say, I will trust in the name of the Lord my God. Some trust in chariots. In other words, some trust in, in, in some trust even in witchcraft. Some trust in connections. Some some trust in their abilities. Some trust in their capabilities. Some trust in their talents. Some trust in whatever that they have. But as for us, we have a revelation. We have a revelation who our God is. And therefore we have decided that we will trust in the name of the Lord, our God. I will trust in the name of the Lord, my God. God. Some trust in horses, others trust in chariots, but as for us, but as for me, I will trust in the name of the Lord, my God. Why? Because the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11, God himself speaking and he says this, for I know, woo, woo, woo. For I know, woo, 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 for I know the plan I have for you. For I know, oh my God, oh my God, he has a plan for you. In other words, your life is not just randomly here. God has a plan for you. In other, you know, how... Huh? I know, I know, my dear, maybe you have built a house. Maybe you have built a house. 
And what you start with, you get a plan, you get a drawing, you get a plan. And on paper, on paper, it might not look like a house. On paper, it might not look like a house. But that plan, that plan, when it is committed in the hands of a committed fundi, a committed construction engineer, that paper, out of that paper, a house will come up. So the Bible says, God himself speaks and says, I know the plan. I have for you declares the Lord God has a plan for you 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 in other words there is something that God is making out of your life there is something that God is making out of your life you are not here on this planet other than an accident you are not an accident God has a plan for your life. And I don't care how much the devil has tried to mess you around. I don't care how much your friends have tried to mess you about. I don't care how your relatives have neglected you. I don't care how your friends have neglected you. I don't care how many attacks you are receiving from the devil. I want you to know this. How, however, 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 and irrespective, however, irrespective of how the devil is attacking you, the attacks of the devil cannot nullify the plan of God for your life. Ooh, ooh. The attacks of the devil cannot nullify the plan that God has for your life. Your boss in the office, maybe he has terminated your job contract. Maybe you have been fired. Maybe you have been laid off. But let me tell you this. Your employer cannot terminate the plan that God has for you. What should you do therefore? What should you do? My dear viewer, trust him. Oh, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Trust him. Put all your trust in the Lord. Put all your trust in the Lord. Disregard whatever drama that is happening around you. Disregard whatever report the doctors have told you. Disregard whatever report your neighbors have said about you. Disregard the rumor that people are spreading about you. And they look unto God and they realize that God has a good plan for you. Jehovah has a good plan for you and the bible he goes on to say he goes on to say plan he, now now he makes it plain for you he makes it plain for you he makes it plain he says the plan that i have for you the plan that i have for you it is to prosper you Ooh, oh oh my god oh my god how i wish that you should know that you are a candidate of god's prosperity you are a candidate of god's prosperity if, if, if we were in church, if, every, if people were in church here, I would have told, I would have said, shout with me. I am a candidate of God's prosperity. You are a candidate of God's prosperity because part of the plan that God has for you is to prosper you. To prosper you financially. To prosper you in your relationships. To prosper you in your marriage. To prosper you in your business. To to prosper you in your finances, to prosper you in your parenting, to prosper you in everything that pertains unto you. The Lord has a plan to prosper you. Then he goes on to say, part of my plan is not to harm you. Part of my plan is not to harm you. That is why I'm standing here telling you, God's plan, harm, is God, the plan of God is not harmful. The plan of God is not harmful. The plan of God is not stagnation. The plan of God for your life is not frustration. The plan of God for your life is not sickness and disease. The plan that God has for you, he goes on to say, it is a plan to give you a hope and a future. Let me tell you this, my dear viewer. 
Your case cannot be hopeless. It cannot be hopeless. Let me say again. Your situation cannot be hopeless. Let me say again. Your situation cannot be hopeless. Just refuse. Just say, hopelessness, I refuse. My situation can never be hopeless. My situation can never be hopeless. My situation can never be hopeless. It can never be hopeless. There is hope for me. There is hope for you, my dear viewer. There is hope for you. There is hope for you. There is hope for you. Behold what God is doing. He's doing a new thing for you. He's doing a new thing for you. He's doing a new thing for you. And a part of the plan that God has for you is to give you a future. I come here to declare to you that you have a bright future. 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 Allow your past to be buried in your past. Allow your past to be buried in the grave that we call Sahau. Sahau Yelio Peter. Let us believe the Lord. Let us believe the Lord. Let us trust the Lord for a blessed future. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. For I know the plan I have for you. It is to prosper you. It is to give you a hope. It is to give you a future. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know what? I want you to know this. That God is on your side. And he has a good plan for you. You can trust him. You can trust him. You can trust him. You can go home and sleep easy. You can go home and sleep easy because God is committed to you. God is committed to you. God is committed to you. He is committed to you. I love a song that was sung many, many, many years ago. Many years ago. Us old school. Sisi, and us who, who are all guys from the old school, we can easily relate to this song. It was written by a, a guy from, I think it's South, South, South America continent called Andre Crutch, who relocated to the US, Andre Crutch. He wrote a song which I love. He talks about trusting in the Lord how it is good to trust in the Lord. And a part of what he says in his song is this. I have had many tears. These are the lyrics of the song. I have learned to trust in Jesus. I have learned to trust in Jesus. And as he says this in stanza one. I have had many tears and sorrows. I have had questions for tomorrow. Therefore, there have been times... I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials came to only make me strong. I, 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 I. My trials only came to make me strong. I have been a lot of places and I have seen Millions of faces. But there were times that I felt so all alone. But in my lonely hour, yet those precious lonely hours, Jesus lets me know that I, I am his own. I am his own. That is why I say that through it all, through it all, through it all, oh, 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 I've learned, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, through it all, through it all, I have learned to depend upon his word. I have learned to depend upon his word. Oh, praise the Lord. Through it all, I thank God for the mountains. I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms. He brought me through. For if I had never had a problem, I wouldn't know God. I, could, I wouldn't know God could solve them.
If I never know what faith in God could do, I would never know what faith in God could do. Then he goes on to say, through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all, what has he learned? I have learned to trust in Jesus. I have learned to trust in God. Through it all and through it all, through it all and through it all, I have learned to depend on his word. Ladies and gentlemen, our God, he is dependable. You can depend on him. You can depend on him. You can depend on him. You can count on him. You can rely on his faithfulness. The Bible says, let God, let all men be liars, but God be true. Let all men be liars, but God be true. You can count on him. His faithfulness is from everlasting to everlasting. His dependability is from everlasting to everlasting. That is my God. That is my God. That is my God. That is my God. And when you know him, when you know him, you will sit pretty and relax. You will sit pretty and relax. Let me give you a story. A preacher told us one day that people boarded a plane in Australia. People boarded a plane in Australia headed to the United States. The plan was to fly from Australia to the USA. So when the plan was midway, there were some mid-air bumpy experiences. There were some bumpy mid-air experiences. And everybody was screaming, woo! Everybody was, was, was screaming, everybody was shaking. Everybody was worried. Are we going to arrive safely? Are we going to arrive safely? But when everybody was screaming, the lights were going on and off in the plane, on and off, on and off. And everybody was panicking. Everybody was in a panicky mode. Everybody was in a panicky mode. But there was just one man in the economy, in the economy. There was just one man who had an economy seat. He was just quiet. Everybody was worried. He was just seated quiet, relaxed, just quiet. He was just quiet. Everybody was worried, screaming, what is happening? But him, he was just quiet. When he saw that they were being worked up with fear and anxiety and worry, he rose up and told them, ladies and gentlemen, if you know what I know, you will remain calm like I am calm. If you know what I know, you will remain calm as I am calm. And everybody looked at him and said, what is this man telling us? Kwani, what does he know? He told them again, if you know what I know, you will remain as calm as I am. You will not cry, you will not panic, you will not be, you, you will not be worried if you know what I know. You will just be calm like me. He said, and then he sat down and he, he remained quiet and quiet, calm, just taking it easy. Just taking it easy. So, after a short while, everything normalized. The plane got better, calm. They continued until when they landed. When they were supposed, when they were landing, the plane now has landed on ground. Everybody came and asked him, "What do you? What do you, you said? If we know what you know, Kwani, what is this that you know that we didn't know? What is this that you know that we didn't know?" And then he told them. When I was boarding this plane, there is a man of God called Bill Graham who also boarded. But he is in the economy. He is in the business class. He is on the other side of the plane. He is in this plane. Do you think this plane can crash when Bill Graham is inside? When the man of God is inside, do you think this plane can go down? It cannot. Because why? The man of God was in this plane. And for sure, they saw Bill Graham alighting from the same plane with him. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm only giving you this story to know this. When you have Jesus, when the Lord is with you, when the Lord is with you, you will relax. 
when you have your trust in Jesus, when you have your confidence in the Lord, when you know that God is the Alpha and the Omega, when you know that God is the author and the finisher of my faith, when you know that he who has begun a good work in me, he shall take it to completion. When you know that he who has called you is a faithful God. When you know that God is committed to you. When you know that you have your trust in the Lord. Nothing in this world can shake you. Nothing in this world can shake you. Nothing in this life can shake you. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge you. Let us learn to trust in Jesus. Let us learn to trust in the Lord. Let us learn to put our confidence in the Lord. Let us learn to put our confidence in the Lord. Because God, is, God, God has the final say. God has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. And you can trust him. You can trust him. You can put your trust in him. And be sure that you will not be put to shame. You can put your trust in him. And be sure that you will not be put to shame. The Bible says they looked unto him and they were not put to shame. When you trust in the Lord, you can never be put to shame. Ladies and gentlemen, from wherever you are, I want, you to, I want to let you know this. Trusting in the Lord begins at the point of having a personal connection with him. You need to have a personal connection. You can never trust him if you don't know him. You got to 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 know the Lord Jesus Christ in a personal way as your personal savior. You got to know him as your personal savior. So wherever you are, my dear viewer, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. I am here. I am here and that is my calling. To pray for the people of the Lord. To receive the salvation of the Lord. So, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I give my life unto you. I welcome you into my heart. Welcome you into my heart. I repent all my sins. I repent all my sins and I confess you, Lord Jesus, as my Savior. From today, I belong unto you. From today, I am a new creation. I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for my viewer who has repeated this prayer for the very first time. Wherever they are, distance is no barrier. I pray that your spirit will bombard them. Fill them with your spirit. Let them experience your manifestations in their everyday life. And me as your servant, I take power and authority against every chain and every bondage. I break all chains and I set your people free to live for you. Have your way, Lord. Holy Spirit, reign in their lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. On the screen, there is a number. Kindly call that number and get in touch with us. Use that number to get in touch with us, and we will constantly continue to pray for you and to guide you in the new life. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to partake of the Lord's table. So, wherever you are, move the elements closer. The way I'm doing is mine. Move the elements closer. The Bible says, the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, the Bible says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
My dear viewer, Candy, take the bread, take the bread, take the bread. Heavenly Father, I speak your blessings upon this element, this bread, that as we partake of it, it is bringing healing in our bodies. In Jesus' name. Partake of the body, take of the body. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the cup. Let us partake of the cup. Let us partake of the cup. Verse 26, the Bible says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And a contemporary Bible scholar has paraphrased this scripture to read, As you proclaim, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and the resurrection till he comes. He's alive forevermore. Lord, I thank you. Just take a moment. Tell him thank you wherever you are. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Just tell him, Lord, thank you for your healing. Thank you for your miracle working power in my body, in my family, in my finances. Just tell him thank you. Just tell him thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I thank you for your people. I bless them. I bless them. I speak the covenant of long life and the blessings of obedience upon them. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, my dear viewer. Now, a service is never complete. Worship is never complete until we serve the Lord with our substances. We must learn to worship the Lord with our substances. So on the screen right now, there is our pay bill number, 954416. You can use this pay bill number to send in your offering, your tithes and your offerings, your thanksgiving offerings, your sacrificial offerings. And the Lord will remember you. The Lord will remember you. The Lord, we, do, we don't do this the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. We don't do this out of compulsion. We just do this because we love the Lord. He has been a good God unto us. So I encourage you, my dear viewer, send an offering, send your tithe to that number. And then the confirmation message, the m -Pesa confirmation message, kindly forward it to our bishop's number as it is appearing on the screen. And he will be in touch with you. He will be in touch with you. He will speak the blessings of the Lord upon you and your life will never be the same again. Your life will never be the same again. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you where the real action takes place. I take this opportunity to welcome you for the real action. Our Sunday worship services. We are one church in two locations. One church in two locations. Starting with here at the House of Bread. Here at the House of Bread, KPCU building. Our service, our Sunday worship service, the first service begins at 8 in the morning. Our first service at the House of Bread begins at 8 in the morning. And our second service begins at 11 in the morning. Eight on the dot, we hit the road. Eleven on the dot, we hit the road. And I welcome you all. Then on the other side, I've, as I've told you, we are one church in two locations. On the other side, along Kangundo Road, we have our church there called the Majestic City Church. Over there, the service begins at 10.30 in the morning. The service at Majestic City begins 10.30 in the morning. Along Kangundo Road, past Ruai Township, 
you proceed for a couple of kilometers, you'll get at a, at a Matatu stage called Majestic City. A stage called Majestic City. It's along Kangundo Road. You alight there, then you cross the road, you'll see a big white tent. That is our church, Majestic City. The service over there starts at 10.30 in the morning. Come, and I promise you, I promise you in the name of the Lord, your lives will never be the same again. Your lives will never be the same again. Thank you so much, my dear viewer. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining in. I hope to see you on Sunday in our worship services. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord be with you all. Amen.